All right, we're ready to get going here. So we're going to have two screens up, going to have a quick couple of slides, and then we're going to go through our ERP system from that side. This side will be the in-progress live demo. The computer's not on yet, so there'll be nothing to show. As soon as it pops up, we'll click to it. When we get into Windows, it's probably going to be missing video drivers, so hopefully the VGA out is going to work. We'll, we'll play it by ear. If it doesn't show up, as soon as we can get it, we'll, we'll get it out. And if it all fails, I'll be there now. Yeah. I'll walk around with it if, it if it fails. So the simple environment we have is we have a virtual box server 2016 on the floor. It can do PXC. PXC takes a little bit longer. So we also do something we call loaded drives. So every piece of equipment that comes into our office, first thing we do is we pull the hard drives. We're NADE certified. So originally when we started, we were asking for donations equipment. We would work with a Fortune 500 and get 20, 30, maybe 40 pieces of equipment on a good day. Instead of asking for donations, we started offering a service. By offering a valuable service, free pickup, certified data wiping, free recycling, we're able to get enough equipment that we're able to meet the needs in our local community. For years, we had a waiting list, but now that we have that service, we have enough equipment that we, we've been able to expand our services across the US. We've shipped computers and internet to all 50 states and Puerto Rico. And two things to credit for that are the service we're able to offer and the systems that we built to be able to manage that. So we have an end-to-end -end ERP system that manages everything from incoming material donations, tracking it, IRS reporting, value for that equipment based on the business, transfer of ownership to those businesses, data wiping, loading of the images. And the way we do data wiping is we've written some custom software that monitors the data wipe. Once it's successfully completed, a copy of Windows is loaded onto that drive. We pull that hard drive out of our data wiping servers, put it into a desktop or laptop, and less than 10 minutes we're into Windows. And that's been able to build our efficiency to keep up with the small staff and volunteers. What we're doing with this system, our board of directors came up with a couple initiatives last year to expand our impact across the US. One was opening a new metro office. We're headquartered in St. Paul. We've been there for the last 10 years. And the program was a county program that started in 1998. And the board feared we have a unique model that's been successful in Minnesota. How do we expand that across the US? We launched a new office in Denver. They've been up and running for a year and given out about 3,000 computers. But it was a lot of work to launch an entire new metro and find staff and trucks and warehouse. So we figured there's a more efficient, easier way for us to help scale across the US, and that's through partners. So we've decided to open up our software for free to nonprofit refurbishers that are interested in automation, having images managed for them, where we can build the server that deploys all of this. So all of the technology, if you're not familiar with it, will remote in, configure, set up those servers. Because we want to make sure nonprofits across the US are successful doing this. Because as been mentioned, we're competing with for-profits. And if we can work together, we can provide better services than the for-profits, get more material. And ultimately, the goal of PCs for People is to get more kids' computers. So we have all of these features that are on the slides for this system, and we'll walk through them. So we'll kick off the install. Two minutes to get into Windows, and then we'll have some skips that, scripts that'll kick off that we'll walk through. On the slide, Ones, but the cheapest way we found to build one is a gaming case with some SATA bays on it. So we can wipe 1500. These are good, healthy, runs a, anywhere from a one to seven pass data wipe, and then loads a copy of Windows back onto the drives. This is the interface for that. We can see 15 drives wiping at one time. We can get reports on the speed which the drives are wiping, so we can pull out drives that aren't performing well, even if they had good sectors. EXC boot we mentioned. And then I'll jump into our ERP system and generate a new transfer of ownership. So we have an ID to put onto this computer for the refurbishing process. The entire system is web-based. 
So in my pocket right now, I could go into the system and tell you our Denver office, what's the revenue for the day? What have the techs done today? How many computers are done? How many checks have we taken in? How many computers have gone out the door? Everything is real time and system. The system is laid out left to right based on build out the features so it can be something for everyone. Left to right, first we have contacts. That's where we work with all the businesses that are providing us incoming equipment. So if you're providing us equipment, you're a contact. Inventory is somewhat self-explainable. We assign a value to every piece of inventory when it's coming in the door. So we have the reports based on the businesses, the value that they've given us. And we can use that for IRS reporting as well as categorizing who are our top 10% businesses that we're working with. Users are our staff and volunteers that are using the system. And clients is anyone that's providing us monetary value. So that could be someone coming in and getting a computer. That could be a foundation grant. That could be a sponsor. The system tracks the incoming computer end to end. So we know the ID of the computer, the business it came from, the person who refurbished it, if it ever came back for repair, the home that it went to. We know the income of the home that it went to, how many kids are in the home. And we can start building reports back to the businesses. CIOs have told us this is extremely valuable because we can tell them over the last year, 400 kids got a computer because you guys work with us. And we can provide a dashboard report for them so the CIO can show the value of IT even after equipment has left the organization. And a lot of times CIOs struggle to show the value of IT because it's a cost. You're not producing, you're not the business, but we can help show that value with the software that we're using. So we'll do a new transfer of ownership. And in the background on this, the, we're into Windows and we're running a benchmark in the background. So we're checking the hard drive speed, we're checking the processor, we're checking the video. It's running a simple benchmark in the background. And I will create a new transfer. And we'll say we're at Mayo Health in Minnesota. So our truck drivers will take this and they'll have a tablet and they'll be at the dock. And they'll write in the description of the equipment we're picking up. So let's say three pallets of desktops. And they're gonna ask the person at the dock, is this a NAID load? So do we have to follow our strict NAID procedures for the data that's in the lot? Even if they check no, we'll still do a data wipe. If they check yes, we're building a full hardware manifest of all the serial numbers of everything that's coming in. So we'll sign this on our tablet. And in the background, it's creating a transfer of ownership that's customizable by location. So whatever language, if you're not NAID certified, you can customize the transfer. It's sending it off, off an email to the main contact for that business so they know what was picked up, when it was picked up, and legally that ownership has transferred to the company that picked up the equipment. That takes us to the inventory page. So that equipment comes back to our warehouse and we're ready to inventory it. We also can look back and see over here, we can view the transfer of ownership for any lot we've ever picked up in the system. <coughs> and then we go to the inventory. The system allows multiple, lo multiple location inventory. So if our truck is heading back to our warehouse or one of our offices, we can keep track of our inventory accordingly. So we'll say this truckload is going to St. Paul, Minnesota, and it was desktops. The way we decided to do our inventory is with three general products. We have a desktop zero, a desktop 30, and a desktop 50. The reason for that is the guys in the warehouse, we didn't want them to be making models of everything that's coming in. We wanted to have generic prices for each one of those categories so we know the value of the incoming equipment. I'll add 50 desktops to this and it'll generate unique IDs for me for those desktops. So Will has the refurbishing open on his screen and we have an application that we call Helper. That's what guides our staff and volunteers through the refurbishing process. So he's gonna use one of the IDs that I just generated. 
and we'll be able to view that data flowing from his install <coughs> into our web-based system. So again, across our offices, we're able to view the computers as they're being refurbished. The way we set up our tech staff, we have KVM switches at each bench. And if we're doing desktops, we'll do 16 at a time. Each one will have a barcode scanner. So we're gonna go down the line with this application that he has up. And how many people, show of hands, have used the MS Reg Refer portal to activate Windows computers? What's gonna happen behind the scenes is we wanted to integrate this. We wanted to push one button and we wanna get drivers, we wanna do activation, print out the PDF off the MS Reg Refurb site. We wanna track the recipient based on what Microsoft wants to be tracked. So on the screen here, we see the ID that he put in, his username, the recipient from MS Reg Refurb, cloud print. We didn't want to install print drivers on every computer that we're working with, so we set up cloud print in our office. So each computer in our office is on cloud print, so we can work directly from this computer and get the PDF printed. We'll scan the old and new serial numbers, and each tech, if they have a line of 16, they go to our uh, citizenship licenses, grab 16 new licenses, use their scanner and go down the line. The system is also barcoded, so that computer ID is barcoded right on the computer. Will's put in all the information, and he's gonna click the button Auto Awesome. You'll see a bunch of things pop up, and that's the automation that I was talking about, where the system is gonna check drivers. It's gonna go out to MS Reg Refurb. If it's a laptop, it does a battery test. The screen that's popping up there is the MS Reg Refurb portal, and Will can put his hands up in the air. He's not, he's not touching anything. So it's just some screen scripting, where it's going through every step in the process, saving us the time of going to a different computer and printing, where we can click a button, and it's perfect for our volunteers, because we're going to end up with a consistent product with the right PDF printed, with the right recipient, where activation is done correctly, legally by Microsoft. It's grabbing those codes and storing in our database at the bottom of the screen there. You can see the Windows code has been stored in our database. Activation is complete. It's doing cloud print right now. He clicks save to Google Docs because we don't have a printer. Cloud print is done. Let me show the, the GUI. No, right there. This is our visual to track the process. So we've gone through cloud print and we're starting Windows activation. Windows activation completed. It's going out to our database and it's marking this computer as refurbished. So if I go back to the web-based system, I can see the very first ID that I put in here. Now I know the graphics card, the processor, the RAM, the make, the model, the old, the new serial, all on this side for one computer that is in that lot. All the rest of them are blank, so I know they haven't been refurbished yet. On the refurb, it was mentioned in the last demo, sound is one of the challenges, and sound drivers are one of the challenges. So we have a color-coded GUI to know that our staff and volunteers have tested the audio, verified the audio is correct. And the final process, once we're sure everything is good on this computer, is we click QA done. And that'll log the tech who's using that computer right now as a refurbisher. It'll log them as being the person who marked this computer as QA complete. So if there's ever any issue, if it's a volunteer we need to do more training with, we know who refurbished the computer when it was refurbished. We can use it as a training opportunity if needed. Back on this side, I can go to the history of any computer and I can see who received that donation in the warehouse. In this case, it has my name. Who was the tech? Is refurb in progress and it's sitting on a bench? We know in real time the status of any computer in the organization, if it's sitting on a bench or if it's being worked on. The value reports I mentioned, we can filter, we can see the value of incoming equipment, we can see the list of businesses we're working with. The impact reports. And now, just like the last demo mentioned, we are creating that scan state, uh, the, the restore is unique to that computer. Not all of our installs have Office. A client might request 50 computers with Chrome, and that's not in our standard. We can't just have a generic recovery package for every computer we go out. And this way, we also can make sure 
Pop is activated. Resets it. It's also a dynamic factory recovery. So we have partners that will insert scripts. We maintain two Windows images. This is our standard image for low income and a blank image. Partners that are using this, they want to put a script in the middle of it to install all of their programs. We use Ninite. If you're not familiar with it, I recommend it. Uh, Ninite is updating all the programs. We do 90 day rebuilds on all of the images and that gets pushed out to the partners. But that blank image is a good point for insertion of scripts to install custom programs. And since it's a dynamic <coughs> factory recovery, any program that you install on it, all of the drivers, even if the drivers require extra programs to run, right now during this process, that's all backed up. So if we ever get a support call where my kid deleted all the important files on my computer, they're able to restore this factory to recovery. Back in the ERP system, we can see data on incoming material by each customer as organization or location as a whole. So I can see for this customer, the orange line is incoming equipment. The blue line is outgoing. I know if I'm getting a lot of waste from a certain business, I know what's going back out in the community. I know this business working with us over the last year, 540 kids have gotten computers, and this is what we're able to provide back. The system also does inventory management. So we're able to look and see what's in each one of our locations. And we're also able to flag stuff to sell in store or online. So if I go to that generic desktop 50, it says sell in store true, so local. It says sell online false. We don't want to sell desktop 50 online. We want to sell specific models like this list of Dell laptops. So if I'm searching, I want to see what's in sign in our, what is online and for sale and the inventory of each thing in sale, I can see that here. We also have another important flag, which is requires eligibility. We all know Microsoft requires certain eligibility for their citizenship licenses. We deal with all citizenship license for anything that's installed with Windows. We don't do any retail work. But every computer that we're going to install Windows on, we set eligibility as true. Then in the e-commerce system, which I'll show in a minute, functions just like Amazon, but it's going to have a pop-up and say, you have a product in your cart that requires eligibility. You have to upload proof of that eligibility. And for us, that's 200% of the federal poverty level. If someone is on food assistance, housing, housing assistance, they'll upload that paperwork and it'll go into our order fulfillment process. We're also able to manage the online listing. We build everything to order when we're selling on the e-commerce site. We don't have set products. Everything is customizable and we'll build, we'll build to order. <coughs> So I have a pre-made client here. I'm all the way on the left side of the ERP system where we manage our customers. I can go in and I can view the history of the customers. I can see what they've purchased, if anything, before. So I have an archive that in the log. I can see the computers that they have if they're under warranty. I can go through this and I can go to a new sale. So if someone walks into our store and they're already existing, we take that customer to a simple point of sale and we're able to distribute all of our products and accessories to them. We've made each product that we have in inventory, flat screens, whatever we want to sell at our point of sale is accessible here. This does credit card processing. It does dashboards, tracking. We use it as a, a simple export to QuickBooks for our accounting system. And I mentioned also has an e-commerce system. So one of our goals in doing this is to create a shared multi-vendor e-commerce system for the members of AFTER. So one thing in talking with various members is distribution of product can be a challenge. We have incoming material, we, we wanna find a good home for it. And if we're able to have a site which becomes the known site to go to, to purchase refurbished computers for nonprofits, for low income, 
if we're all using our Google advertising dollars and we're directing part of it to this e-commerce <coughs> site, we can have some economies of scale to be able to efficiently distribute our products. This is a custom e-commerce system that's built for distributing the desktops, laptops, as well as internet. So the system is a subscription management system for internet, as well as integrating refurbishing. On the refurbishing side, everything has been built. The factory recovery is ready. QA is complete, and it'll be restarting into out-of-box mode. So while that happens, we'll be an online person that jumps on the website and then purchases a laptop and internet. I mentioned these are customizable. Being a partner, there's two options for internet. Uh, anyone, everyone has probably heard of the legs of the school to be a digital inclusion organized stool to be a digital inclusion organization, providing internet support and computers. And if you're not already providing internet, this is a way to be able to provide internet. There's two options. We work with Mobile Beacon in a partner program where if you wanna be hands off, sign up your constituents that are coming in, we'll drop ship internet, we'll manage eligibility, we'll manage billing, we'll manage support. So it's a completely hands off way to get $10 a month unlimited sprint internet out to the people that are coming to your program. It's something that can be marketed to get people to come in and get computers because $10 a month for unlimited mobile internet is a deal that doesn't exist elsewhere. So that's the hands off approach. The system is also set up for mobile citizen. So if you wanna be a mobile citizen reseller, it's set to manage those subscriptions. If you wanna take on all of the billing, all of the support, purchasing and managing your inventory, <coughs> it's ready to do that too. And the last thing I wanted to show is, since I had a product in my cart that requires eligibility, those flags that I said, now if this is an individual, they'll upload their proof. If it's a nonprofit, they'll do the same. So we're uploading proof of being eligible. We're doing some basic intake questions, and this is how we're building the impact reports based on who got the equipment. <clears throat> Both locally and online, it handles credit card processing. <coughs> so that order is complete, and then our staff goes into the order fulfillment system. So we're going to view that that proof of eligibility that was uploaded, that information, we're gonna make sure everyone that's getting the products through this system is actually eligible based on our eligibility criteria. If they are, we'll approve the order and we'll ship it out to them and start their subscription. If anyone has any questions, if anyone's interested in the product, happy to take those questions at the end or any time later to leave for the airport at about four, but accessible at uh, C. Sorensen, 